So if you remember the lectures from the Israelites, the kings of Judah and the priests of Judah, as well as some citizens, worked hard to make sure that the entire population only worshipped Yahweh, though they were often unsuccessful. You may also remember that they focused that worship of Yahweh within Solomon's temple in the capital city of Jerusalem. But in a failed revolt against the Neo-Babylonian Empire, the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar II deported the Judeans out of their kingdom, settling them near the city of Babylon. It's during this period of Babylonian captivity that the Judeans' view of Yahweh ceased to be that of simply a national god, and they began to see him as a universal god, present not just in the land of Israel, but throughout the world. As you read, in 539 BCE, Cyrus the Great, the king of the Persians, conquered Babylon, and he set the Judeans free, allowing them to return to their homeland of Israel slash Judah. He also funded the building of a new temple to Yahweh within Jerusalem, which was completed in 516, ushering in what we call the Second Temple Period. During the Second Temple Period, monotheism was accepted almost universally throughout the Judean population. In fact, early on we have a completion of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. It was actually put together from four different scripts, four different manuscripts, written during the first temple period and possibly also during the Babylonian captivity, woven together into five different books. And it's throughout the second temple period that something called the Tanakh, T-A-N-A-K-H, was written. The Tanakh is essentially the Hebrew Bible, or within Christianity, the Old Testament. Under the Achaemenid Persians, the Judeans were very free, allowed to practice their religion as they wish and conduct their affairs as they wish. However, after the conquest of Alexander the Great and the creation of the Hellenistic empires of West Asia, particularly the Seleucids, which took over the Persians, and the Ptolemies, who took over the Egyptians, Judah found itself once again bouncing back and forth between outside forces. And this Hellenistic culture, which permeated West Asia, and when we say Hellenistic, we're talking Greekish. The Greeks called themselves Hellens, and so Hellenistic or Greekish. This Hellenistic culture began to permeate many of Judea's aristocracy, the upper class. They began to take on many Greek habits. Some of them even worshipped Greek gods. And in 167 BCE, the Judeans once again revolted, this time against the Seleucids. And once again, the Judeans got pretty lucky. The Seleucids were already taking a pounding from the Roman Empire, as well as a new group of Persians called the Parthians. In the year 140 BCE, the Romans told the Seleucids that they had to give up Judea, and the Romans allowed the Judeans to set up their own independent monarchy. The leaders of the revolt, the Hasmonean family, set up a new dynasty, and they cleansed the temple of its Greek profanations, or the Greek things that had been brought into it. They threw a celebration, and the oil for the lamps miraculously lasted eight nights. This is the event which is celebrated during the holy days of Hanukkah. The Hasmoneans ruled independently all the way up until 37 BCE, and they were extraordinarily successful conquerors. They started ruling over only a land somewhat around Jerusalem. As they conquered other peoples, particularly in the north, they forced them to convert to Judaism. This practice was controversial amongst the population. The aristocracy, a group of people called the Sadducees, had no issue whatsoever with this. But a lot of the less ritualistic and more spiritual leaders, a group of, of, of folks called the Pharisees, saw forced conversion as a non-true act of faith. Ultimately, the royal family was divided between these two groups, leading to a civil war. And during the civil war, Rome did something very similar to what it did to the Ptolemies. It stepped in, ended it, and set up its own puppet king, a man named Herod. Herod was a very Hellenistic ruler. He wasn't a very holy man. He saw the temple as a means of political power. He actually invested quite heavily in expansions to the temple. But he wasn't an oppressive ruler by all accounts. And his kids were just as bad. Once again, the Judeans found themselves revolting and having to push back. And in the year 6 CE, the Romans stopped working through puppet kings and just made Judea a province of the Roman Empire. Jewish independence movements were common for the next century. As a matter of fact, in the 60s CE, they became such a thorn in the side of the Roman Empire that the Romans decided to destroy their temple. 
ending the Second Temple period. And in the second century CE, the Romans kicked the Judeans, now being called just simply the Jews. The Romans kicked them out of their homeland, and the Jewish diaspora began. We'll be talking more about Rome next week.